Right, good morning everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to MCM Outdoors. I thought I'd put a video together just explaining what I take on a typical day hike, not an overnighter, a couple of hours in the mountains. And I've got with me my trusty Osprey Hike Light 32 litre day sack just for this video. Now, 32 litres, well, very quickly, it's very subjective this. I won't be getting into any debates about I'm right, I'm wrong. This is just my advice and it's subjective. People take more, people take less. People think you've got far too much gear. People think you don't have enough gear. This is just my particular take on it and what I think you should take. The video is aimed at complete beginners, but if you're a seasoned hiker, maybe if you watch it, you might learn something new, which is great if that happens. So let's get on with the video. This, uh, this pack is a 32 litre, Day Sack by Osprey. I have done a review of it previously and I'll put a link to that up there. I think it's pretty good and 32 litres is what I think is doable for a day in the mountains when you've got all the proper gear. And it's all about enjoying yourself but staying safe and preparing for all eventualities because you don't know what might happen. So prepare for the unexpected. Now, if I was arriving, uh, got to the mountains, depending on what season it is, I might take more or less. Obviously winter, you're going to adjust your kit accordingly and have lots more warm gear with you and fluids because you're going to be out there potentially for longer and you've also got issues with darkness and less daylight and stuff like that. But if I'm arriving at my location, let's say for argument's sake, it is summer, late spring, summer. This is the pack I'll be taking with me. Um, I'm gonna go through this in no particular order, but I've got it packed as in how I would pack it for a day out in the hills. Some packs you can get access inside through a side zip, which is a lot easier, lots more convenient. However, this is a top loading rucksack with a draw pull. It keeps the snow out, keeps the elements out, and I'm working with I've got on this. So, we'll start with the sides. First of all, in these elastic side pockets, I've got with me a trusty flask. And in the other pocket, a one litre sig bottle. Always make sure you've got enough fluids for your hike. At a very minimum, depending on how far you're planning on going, I'd be taking a litre of water. I would normally take two litres for a day out in the mountains. People might say you need more or less, that's just what I take. I find I've norm normally got a little bit left over if I'm taking two litres. Most rucksacks nowadays are hydration bladder compatible, which means that you don't have to take water bottles or water carriers. You can just use the bladder, slide it down the back pocket in the rucksack itself. And then you've got a bit of a hose which comes out over one of the straps and it's a lot more convenient. You can take on water as you're walking. You don't have to stop, take your lid off and uh, have a drink. You can do it on the go. Personally, I'm not in a rush when I'm out in the hills. I like to stop, sit down, take my time taking all the scenery. So it's no bother to me to take these flasks. Uh, they're quite robust as well. These are aluminium, they pick up dents along the way, but that adds to the character when you've got a dented water bottle and it's the sign of a seasoned hiker. Some people like to take hot drinks with them. Um, so you can take a vacuum flask. This is very old, it's by Primus, but it's lasted well and it's got one of the push button operations. So you don't have to screw on and off. It's nice and easy to get your fluids in and out. Some people love looking forward to a hot drink on the hill. Um, and if you've got little ones with you, uh, it might cheer them up having a hot chocolate or things to make a hot chocolate. I'll go into that later because I've got a little stove with me in this one. But yeah, a nice warm and drink. You know, sometimes people think it boosts morale. You feel a lot better, you, know, you might be cold. Some people who are not used to hiking for hours in the hills. You sit down, have something to eat, have a hot drink. You feel better, you've got a new lease of life and you're ready to go again. So that's my tips, refluids, water, whatever you want to bring, at least two liters I normally take. Flask, if you so wish to have hot fluids. You can see on this pack here, I've got a pair of gloves. In winter, these are very much an essential. In summer, it could be really cold on top. Do not underestimate the effect of wind. The weather conditions down at valley level might be very, very different up on the summit and you are going to wish that you had some gloves with you. Your hands can get really cold and really uncomfortable if you're not careful. So always have a pair of gloves with you on a hike. I've got these just strapped with a carabiner because there's a loop on them to the outside of my pack. 
I've also got other stuff which I'm going to talk about so make sure you have a pair of gloves whatever the season because the conditions as you get higher up are going to be a lot cooler and colder than they are on valley level and that is accentuated by wind chill. Moving up to the top of the pack, most packs have lids with a zip closure on the very top. I have here a head torch. Always make sure you carry with you a torch, ideally a head torch so that your hands are free, just in case of the unexpected really, you never know what's gonna happen. If the worst does happen and you're forced to call for help, it's not gonna go down very well if you're not in possession of the basic equipment, i.e. a head torch. Um, you know, if you're walking with a group of people, you should always be walking to the fitness levels of the least, the slowest person in the group, you should be working to their speed. And, you know, with that in mind, you might underestimate how long your particular hike is gonna take. You might get caught out in the dark, you're gonna need some light with you. It gets very, very dark out in the mountains, there's no light pollution and do not underestimate how dark it goes. You need to have a head torch with you. You should also have some spare batteries or a spare battery with you as well. Still in the top compartment of the pack, we have an emergency foil blanket. These are really cheap and they're really light. Again, there's a lot of theme here about planning for the unexpected. Things can go wrong really quickly in the outdoors. And whilst it is a fun activity and something that you should be enjoying and not looking for the worst case scenario, you should always plan for that eventuality. If you don't have it, you can find yourself in a lot of trouble. There's a video on Snowden, uh, it's about six months ago, there's a group of lads climbing, uh, a seemingly innocuous slope, just with a bit of snow on the ground, not a very steep angle at all. One of them slips, he hasn't got an ice axe, he carries on, his momentum and his body weight carries him, he picks up speed and he's gone over the edge he's found by his friends around half an hour later and he's got significant injuries he's incapacitated with very serious injuries to his spine and his pelvis um, i don't think they had an emergency blanket with them if they have my apologies but as i recall it they wrap some bags clothes um, dry sacks around him and try and shelter him from the elements. These reflect the heat back, so if the worst happens, you're incapacitated, you've sprained your ankle, broken your ankle, something like that, someone has to trek out or you have to wait for help. You could be waiting a good couple of hours. Hypothermia is a very real threat, especially if you're not moving. One of these foil blankets can be the difference between life and death. They're about three pounds, two pounds on the internet from Go Outdoors. Carry one of those, you don't take up a lot of weight, and you could save your life. Do not go out on the hill without them. They also do emergency shelters, which are like a plastic shelter which goes over you. Sometimes three or four of you can sit in that, even if it's not an emergency. If you're having something to eat, having some sandwiches on the summit, uh, you can all huddle in that. Collective body heat just warms it up and makes it a bit more pleasant as you're stopping to have your lunch or whatever. Go back into the top of the pack and we have a compass. If you have a compass, also make sure that you have a map. I've got a 1 to 25,000 Ordnance Survey map in the front pocket, which I will get to. Uh, obviously, if you've got a compass, know how to use it. There's plenty of videos on YouTube and there's plenty of outdoor courses that you can go on. Do not carry a compass if you don't know how to use it. A lot of people also take GPS. Obviously, bear in mind that you shouldn't just be relying upon that. You should always know how to use a map and compass. GPS's can fail, you can have problems with the software and the batteries can run out. Also, a lot of people use the mobile phone. Whilst that might seem like a good idea, once again, if you don't have any spare batteries or you haven't got a power bank, I have, I'll come to that, you can get stuck out. Um, so don't just rely on phones, GPS's. Always have a compass and a map, and more importantly, know how to use it. See if there's anything else. I've got a packet of trusty tissues. Uh, I get hay fever in the summer and I get a sniffly, runny nose in the winter sometimes. Again, just handy to have a little packet of Kleenex or tissues with you in the front of your pack. Nothing else in the top. We go to the front packet now. Okay, so this is accessible with a little ring pull there on the zip. And on the subject of maps, here is a one to 25,000 OS Explorer map of the English Lake District. I've just pulled one from the shelf behind me. Like I say, once you've got an OS map, research your route beforehand, have it marked on here in pencil, if you so wish. Know the terrain, have a little look at the terrain, 
know your routes before you're, uh, you're out on it. Have a little study of it the night before or a couple of days before and make sure that you know how to use a map, how to orientate a map and how to look for the features and contours and what they all mean. Have yourself an OS map. See if there's anything else here. There isn't, but I would normally have things like sweets, um, little snacks, energy bars in there. If you're walking with a partner or a friend, you can keep your rucksack on your back. They can go into this zipper for you, you know, if you want something to eat. A quick snack and things to be easily accessible. So, we're getting quite a collection of things here. Again, it's just sort of demonstrating, even on a day hike, these are the sort of things that I think you should be taking with you. Quick hydration. Now we're going to go into the top lid. I have in here, I have asthma, which is um, exacerbated by hay fever and certain pets give me allergies. So if you're an asthmatic, you've got a history of asthma, bring an inhaler. You don't want to be stuck out on the hill without an inhaler. You do not want to be having an asthma attack with no access to help when you're hours away potentially from your medication. That goes for any other medication that you require. Make sure that you have it with you. I always carry a strip of painkillers, you know, just in case you get a headache. Uh, you never know. Again, it's, it's planning for the what if. Nine times out of 10, you won't need them. I've got some lip balm here. If it's very windy, um, it can sort of sap the moisture from your lips and your lips can get very dry, especially in summer. Carry some lip balm. Um, a lot of these have um, sun protection factor in as well. It stops you getting dry crack lips. On the subject of sun, like me, if you're a little bit follically challenged, you would have a hat on, uh, even when it's uh, grey and cloudy, uh, the UV rays could be quite strong and it's quite thin, isn't it, the skin on your scalp, you need to be protecting that. So if you haven't got a hat on, make sure that you've got some sun cream, these are just a little, some cheap ones from Aldi, this is factor 50, pretty much total block, get some of that on, even where your, your forehead's exposed, Use some sun cream on your ears, on your nose, because you can really get caught out by the sun in the mountains. If it's summer, I will invariably be wearing a cap just to protect my head that way. But again, a little bit on your nose and the tops of your ears doesn't go amiss. So carry some sun cream there with you as well. That is it for the top pocket. We can now go in to the main body of the rucksack. And first things first, easily accessible, number one on the subject of being safe, a first aid kit. These are quite cheap, you can pick them up online. Most outdoor shops do them, they have everything you need. Uh, this one's got a waterproof zip and it's made by Life Systems. But that is first in the top of my pack. If I open the pack, the first aid kit is there to hand. If I'm not open it, someone else does it. They don't want to be rooting around for a first aid kit. If you've got some kind of serious cut and you're bleeding, losing blood, you don't want to be faffing around looking for some, something to stop that bleeding. You want it easily accessible, easy to hand, and you don't want to be rooting around for it. First aid kit in the top of your pack. I've got a wind cheater. This one's made by Montan and it weighs next to, next to nothing. Really lightweight, it packs down really small as you can see in this little stuff pouch. Um, like I say, the winds, wind chill effect, even on summer days, it, you can start to stop, lose heat. So if I put this on, that stops that from happening and that takes no weight whatsoever or next to no weight in your pack. It packs down really small as well. It can mean the difference from being comfortable to being very uncomfortable, even on summer days where there's a lot of wind and wind chill is present. Moving on, we've got our main substantive waterproof. If it's not raining on the start of your walk, it might be as you get higher up. Again, just have that near the top of your pack because if the weather is changeable, that's something you might be putting on or taking off as conditions change. So, waterproof jacket there. I have, this is an insulated pouch by a company called Valium Peak and it just keeps this wall, a power bank, People take a mobile phone and a lot of people rely on it. Like I've said, you shouldn't be doing that, but if you do, which you shouldn't be, make sure that you've got a power bank. This is quite a high capacity. I can get about three charges for my mobile phone out of this. It's got a big lithium polymer battery on it. One thing to bear in mind is that lithium polymer batteries do not like the cold. It saps the energy out of them really quickly. Hence, if I take this pouch, it's got some uh, down insulation inside, some synthetic insulation, and it just protects 
the power bank from the cold. So if you stop it for lunch, plug your phone in, put it all inside this, leave it for 15 or 20 minutes on a fast charge. It's gonna get your phone up to a decent charge level. Um, obviously as well, do not forget your cables. If that is the case, you don't wanna bring a power bank and then realize that you haven't got an actual cable to charge your phone up. Moving down the pack, I have this in a dry bag. Put spare clothing and spare gloves and a hat in a dry bag. If it's raining, it's always nice to have a warm and dry pair of gloves, a warm and dry hat, and some warm, dry clothing to put on if the conditions take a turn for the worst. So in this particular one, similar to what I've got on now, I've got a buff, which is a cylindrical tube of material. You can pull that over your head, cover your face, all the way up to your eyes. You can wear it as a hat. There's all different types of configurations. You can use that fabric to keep yourself really warm. I've got a spare pair of gloves. These ones are by Berghaus. Nice and thin and light. They don't take up too much room. They'll be nice and warm and dry if you've got cold hands. If your main pair get absolutely saturated, it's always nice to have a warm and dry pair to put on if you've got really cold hands. And I've got a merino wool hat. Again, it'll be in the dry bag so it's nice and dry. If you've been trekking, hiking from the car and your hat's really wet, you've got a nice, dry one to put on to keep you nice and warm and protected. Moving further down the pack, we're nearly done. Again, another dry bag. We'll open this one up and see what's inside. We've got some spare clothing. This is a spare fleece top. Again, if you get uncomfortable, you get into difficulty, you need some warm, dry clothing to take in case of emergencies or if you're just feeling really, uncold, really cold and uncomfortable. Inside this one, I've got an insulated down jacket. This one's made by Montan, and it's very, very warm. It's got synthetic down inside, kills the wind, and it is really, really warm. I'll take that while camping. You don't have to spend a lot, get yourself into decathlon. There's some really budget-friendly types squash them down into that dry bag and it stuffs down really small and compact it doesn't take up much room at all but again this could be a lifesaver if the worst happens and you're static losing heat getting really cold waiting for health put this on mountain rescue will be really pleased when they come and find out that okay you've had an accident but you know what you're really prepared and there's nothing else that you could have done to minimize the risk to yourself and obviously those who are coming up and risking their own lives to rescue you We'll keep going, we're nearly done. Now, I like to take on day hikes, and this is an optional part. I consider most of these things essential, okay? But if you've got little ones with you and you wanna make your hike a little bit more of an adventure, something a little bit more memorable, I like to take a little stove to make a hot drink or heat up some water for maybe a dehydrated meal, make up um, a packet pasta. You know, the dehydrated pasta meals you can get and I've got a little stove. Um, this one is made by Eiffel Outdoor Equipment. I've done reviews on this stove previously, but it's small, light, it's got a low center of gravity, stays low and compact to the ground, and it works well in cold weather. The link to the stove is here. So I carry a little stove with me, a small gas bottle, and I've got a titanium cup. Inside this titanium cup, which is stored in its own mesh carrying pouch, I'll just look in the lid, I've got a little sachet of coffee. Now, obviously, depending on what you drink, uh, just take the little powdered sachets with you. You can get Vinto, um, you can get soft drinks, um, you can get hot chocolates. If you've got little ones with you, they're going to get a lot of enjoyment out of sitting around, watching the mum, the dad, whoever, making a nice hot drink on a stove. It's going to mix things up for them, make it really exciting and interesting. And the little ones will really enjoy sitting around as you fire up a hot chocolate and then they're going to really enjoy drinking that whilst they're having a snack. Keeps the little ones happy, keeps the grown-ups happy and everyone's enjoying the day out in the glorious fells. Some final things which I just take, I've got in this plastic container, uh, it's, a, it's a light my fire, it's a ferrocerium rod and I would just use that for lighting the stove get the stove lit um, and a titanium weighs next to nothing long 
handled spoon because if I'm taking a boil in the bag meal or a rehydrated meal and this is optional don't forget uh, you're going to want to get in the pouch without getting your hands messy so these long handled spoons come in really handy that is it folks um, if I've missed anything out of this please don't um, give me too much of a hard time I've tried to think of everything which you could possibly need uh, if you're going up in winter, I don't think most beginners will be doing that, but if you are, make sure you've got spikes, crampons, or an ice axe, and you know how to use it. Most beginners will not be going out in winter conditions on their own for the first time. You might think this is a lot, and a lot of this stuff will probably be redundant, and it's just on the off chance that things go wrong, you injure yourself, or someone in your group injures themselves, and they are immobilized, and you have to wait for rescue, mountain rescue, it ain't going to happen in 10 minutes, folks. Do not assume there's going to be a magical helicopter appears out of the sky just to wear lift you to the nearest hospital. You could be in that position for three, four, five hours, depending on how far away you are, how remote it is, how bad the weather conditions are. So you need to stay warm during that time in which you're waiting for rescue. So let's help our mountain rescue out. Let's go up there fully prepared just in case. Touch wood, I've been walking in the hills for 25 years and I've never had anything serious happen. I was always taught to plan for the worst case scenario, that just in case. And if you're prepared, it makes things go that much more smoothly in the event that something does go wrong. I hope you found this video useful. And uh, yeah, if you've, you know, you've got any suggestions for me, let me know in the comments below. I'll reply to everything. And if you've got any criticism, keep it constructive and helpful and I'll respond to that as well. So go and enjoy the great outdoors. Like I say, we've all been cooped up for a long time now, and I'm expecting a bit of a boom for people going out walking in the hills and mountains. I hope this video has been useful to people who are just starting out, maybe some people who are a bit more experienced. If you've got any value from this video, hopefully you have, please give it a quick thumbs up. And if you're new to MCM Outdoors, check out the back catalogue. There's over 230 videos, and I hope there's something there to keep everyone entertained. Go and enjoy the great outdoors, folks, and I'll see you on the next video.